Okay, it seems that you guys still have a couple of questions. <clears throat> a couple of them are actually same questions which I'm, I will be answering again in this video. So, I've noticed that the same questions keep coming in again and again and again and again. So I thought of jotting them all on a piece of paper and then answering them one by one. So let's do it. Cause I can fly. So the first question is, what is the mileage? I guess this is the favorite question of us Indians. Kitna deti hai? So after the first servicing, uh, the mileage that I'm getting is somewhere around 32 in city. And uh, on the highway, it was around 38, 39. It was fluctuating between that. So that's the kind of mileage I am getting. Now again, mileage will depend upon how you handle your motorcycle. So if you are way too harsh on the throttle, you will get poor mileage and vice versa does it heat up well yes when you when you're in city like if you're doing bumper to bumper traffic the bike tends to heat up but then again after the first servicing as well uh, the heating has gone considerably down so now it's bearable so absolutely okay with that that amount of heat what is the top speed well this bike is not meant for very high speeds and all for that you can buy KTM's and any other motorcycles as I've said already and uh, this bike is more of a sports cruiser and uh, the top speed that I have managed on my Himalayan was 120, 120 kilometers per hour. So that's the top speed I managed on my Himalayan. The company claims it can go up to 130. I read a post on Facebook that said that uh, someone has done 150 on his Himalayan uh, around Lavasa, which I don't know how genuine that was. And uh, yeah so the sweet spot is between 80 to 110 that is when the bike feels very happy and absolutely joy to ride the next question can this bike be used as a daily commuter certainly yes i use it as a daily commute motorcycle i commute daily to work uh, on this motorcycle so absolutely yes so the next question is uh, around this tiny little thing which is the gear shifting is it hard or is it soft or it's what exactly how exactly is the gear shifting well again after the first servicing uh, the gear shifting has gone pretty smooth I would say so now the gear shifting is a lot more smoother but um, on my Himalayan particularly I mean it's the second servicing is approaching so it's gone a bit harder again so I will get it uh, fixed in the next I mean in the second servicing otherwise it's I mean quite okay I don't see any problem there uh, initially it was a problem because uh, coming from a Pulsar 200 NS yes the clutch was hard the gear shifting was way too hard but it's all uh, I mean it's all a matter of habit and uh, how is the pickup well uh, pickup has always been nice I mean on this bike because it's got a very nice stocky engine and uh, now with this uh, off-road exhaust that I have on my motorcycle it has gone a notch above so it's awesome now the pickup is just too good I love the pickup and the sound that it makes yes and uh, compared to the other Royal Enfields uh, it definitely has a way lot better pickup now don't again start comparing the pickup with a Pulsar 200 NS or a 400 or KTM and all that stuff doesn't make any sense there um, is the seating comfortable absolutely yes I would say the seating is a way too com comfortable um, because of which uh, it might pose a problem for your bum because when you're on a long ride and uh, the seat actually poses a problem on the bum because it's uh, it takes a toll on your bum and it aches a l sometimes if you're on a really long drive like I'm talking about like 700 800 kilometers like that or more so that's when you can stand up uh, relax on your butt and uh, then again go back and enjoy the ride so yeah the seat is very comfortable now regarding the seating the pillion seat I don't know whether it's a problem with my bum or in general it is uh, I found the pillion seat a bit too narrow 
so i am not comfortable on the pillion seat myself don't know about others because most of the time i ride single i do not carry any pillion so i do not have multiple feedbacks to share on that uh, thing next question on by the mosquito does it vibrate like other royal in fields definitely not I mean, uh, there is a concept of counterbalancer shaft which is inside this motorcycle, which Royal Enfield has introduced on this motorcycle, because of which uh, it has got a very less amount of vibration. Who or which type of rider should buy a Royal Enfield Himalayan? A very valid question. Uh, now the thing is that if you are a serious uh, tourer, then this bike is definitely for you. If you are planning to conquer any road that might come on your way then this bike is for you now if you're planning to do only city rides and no long trips or anything please don't buy this bike this bike is not for you then this bike is for the serious minded tourers the go anywhere type uh, people and who really love cruising and not exactly is keen for high speeds and knee downs and corners so it's for serious minded tourers like myself what mirrors are on my Royal Enfield Himalayan? In case you have missed the video, I'll post the card. But it's uh, it's uh, I replaced the stock mirrors with the KTM stock. I mean KTM Duke 390 mirrors. They are a lot better. Now, why did I install it one motorcycle? Because I found them on uh, Indian Hell Rider. He's another moto vlogger from New Delhi. So, on his Himalayan, I found this uh, these KTM mirrors. They look good and I asked him and he said that it's fine bro it's like provides a lot better viewing angle and everything so I inquired and I got them on my Himalayan and it's awesome and in case you are inquiring about the price it's it costed me 470 Indian rupees from a shop at Karol Bagh New Delhi uh, you can inquire and get it from any KTM dealer um, genuine parts dealer I would say and they are very easy fit you don't have to put in any extra nuts or bolts to fit them so straight fit and great view okay is Royal Enfield Himalayan air cooled or oil cooled both so they both are uh, there it's air cooled and you have oil cooling as well so here is the oil cooler so that is the oil cooler this one uh, and I did face some problems uh, with this one with uh, the oil leaking from here but now it has been fixed by Royal Enfield so this pipe has been replaced so there's no more oil leaking and anything like that okay you also have a lot of question around this leg guard now I got it from a guy named Vaibhav Vashisht who runs a motorcycle rental company in New Delhi India and uh, uh, that's uh, by the name of uh, Roads and Chrome. You can check out his website. It's an awesome website. He has a lot of motorcycles to rent out. And uh, I bought it from him. He got them first on his all in Field Himalayans. Um, and he suggested this one to me. So I thought, yeah, why not? It costed, when I bought it, it costed me 2000 bucks for a pair. Uh, I guess the price has increased now. Okay. Uh, you want to know about the exhaust? Uh, this is an off-road exhaust. That's how Royal Enfield markets this. And uh, this exhaust costed me three. Sorry for that loud noise. Uh, someone wanted to do a show off on their exhaust outside on the road. Anyways, coming back to the question on the exhaust on the on my Himalayan. So this one is an off-road exhaust. It costed me 3,700 rupees. And uh, I got it from Manzil Motors, Gurgaon. And uh, it's made by Royal Enfield. So it's not voiding the warranty or anything like that. Uh, it has got a louder exhaust note. And it has got a lot more popcorns to it, uh, which some don't like. Personally, I love it, and uh, it has, it has uh, like given a lot more power to the motorcycle. The pickup has gone better. I mean, it, it is all my opinion. 
so I would say yes if you want to get it on your motorcycle you can definitely contact the Royal Enfield dealer near you and ask for this exhaust show my videos in, in case you need it as a reference um, okay so the next question is how does a Royal Enfield Himalayan handle in the city traffic it's the charm because of the turning radius being so large and so nice this bike is an absolutely joy in the Indian traffic scenario trust me on that because I ride in uh, Helsam traffic in Noida uh, and uh, this is just too good I mean you can easily filter through the dense traffic you can I mean it feels very big as a bike when you see it but then again it's actually very easy to flick through with this bike so awesome yeah now comes some important questions uh, about ABS fuel injection tubeless tires well I've already answered these questions but still for your information um, will this bike have ABS in future well even Royal Enfield is not sure about that but uh, maybe we can always be thinking positive and be hopeful that yes there might be um, ABS coming in on these motorcycles and uh, fuel injection even I'm not sure even RE is also not sure on that maybe in future and uh, tubeless tires now tubeless tires as of now again it's a no-no from Royal Enfield now on tubeless tires I would like to say one thing that some of you said or commented uh, stating that uh, tubeless tires and uh, spokes do not go hand in hand well it's not completely right the reason being if you have watched the Ducati Multistrada Enduro 2016 that comes with spokes and tubeless tires so I'm not comparing the Ducati Multistrada with the Himalayan because that will be very stupid in, if I start doing that but then again the technology is there so it can definitely be thought of so it's not an impossible technology stop barking should you buy a Royal Enfield Himalayan? of course yes I mean there is no second thinking about that but again as I mentioned if you are an adventure tourer if you are a hardcore to tourer on motorcycle only then consider buying a Royal Enfield Himalayan else it's not for you okay so another interesting question came up uh, is that will it be my long-term bike in the sense that will I do I see myself uh, riding on this motorcycle down five six years well I am not into prediction I cannot predict future but certainly as of now I am riding this motorcycle yes I will continue to ride this motorcycle if uh, something major doesn't happen to me or to the motorcycle I love this bike Okay, this question also came up. Am I getting paid by Royal Enfield to say good things about them and all that stuff? Certainly not, because uh, if I would have uh, been paid by Royal Enfield to make this video and say good things about them, then I wouldn't have highlighted the negative size as well. So again, as I mentioned earlier, use this thing up there if you have it. Okay, while making or while filming this uh, video, uh, I actually got another comment from one of my subscribers by the name of Mohit Dagar. Mohit, uh, this is specially for you because this just came in when I was filming so I'm just mentioning your name. So you asked me that whether you should go in for a Himalayan or a Thunderbird or an Avenger. Well, uh, you have also mentioned in your comment that uh, you're not into strict off-roading and all that stuff. Keeping that uh, point in mind, you can definitely go in for an Avenger if you want because Avengers are very good in city I'm not sure about very high altitude and extreme terrain so it's a very good uh, in city bike and a very comfortable riding position so you can definitely go for that if not the Thunderbird is yes definitely another choice Himalayan if you think that if you you would be going in for like very long distance and extreme terrains and off-road Uttarakhand and snow slash rock and all that stuff then only consider yourself buying this motorcycle the himalayan 